A trip out west to four beautiful Kelowna courses, getting fit by TaylorMade, and disruptive golf advertising at its best. Today on Score Golf TV. This is Score Golf, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by Molson Canadian 67, official beer of the PGA of Canada, RBC Canadian Open, and Canadian Women's Open. Taylor Made Golf, the number one driver in golf. Tourism Kelowna, 20 courses from easy going to ego shattering. Now, here's your host, Bob Weeks. Hello Canada and welcome to another edition of Score Golf TV and today we're coming to you from the TaylorMade Adidas headquarters here in Canada just north of the city of Toronto and what a place this is let me tell you it's like a candy store if you are a golf lover we're going to show you around a little bit later on I'm also going to go through the innovative mat fitting process here at the TaylorMade Performance Lab it's nothing like you have ever seen before trust me folks you'll want to stay tuned for that we're also going to go out west to have a look at some of the beautiful golf courses out in Kelowna and to kick things off this week, as we always do, let's have a chat with some PGA Tour pros. Prospective, meeting today's PGA Tour stars. Adjustability has become one of the biggest buzzwords in the golf industry. What began as weight manipulation in a tailor-made driver head eight years ago has grown into a full-fledged feature available from every manufacturer. From changing lie and loft and face angles to swapping out shafts or even adjusting the length of your putter, customizable clubs are now within arm's reach of every player. Manufacturers suggest consulting one of their fitting experts or your local PJ of Canada professional to see which setting is right for you. From there, changing things up from time to time is your option. Tour pros, well, they've got the clubs in play, but they like to leave things alone. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, it's nice to have that ability to, to, uh, to change your equipment a little bit like that, but you know, you don't want to do too much of it, you could, be, you could spend a little bit too much time tweaking your equipment. I think we already spend a lot of time trying to get things perfect, so, but you know, it's, it's a great ability and, and uh, you know, it's nice to be able to adjust your equipment just a little bit without having to change shafts and another driver head, you can kind of just do it with the club you have and try and, you know, get it just perfect, so, you know, it's pretty neat, this technology, and um, TaylorMade was one of the first companies to come out with it. It seems like just about every company has gone that way because it, it is a successful idea. You know, it's, it's a, lot, a lot more going on. You know, if you, you can get caught up in it pretty easily. Obviously, you can hit a couple bad shots. It's easy to just go and tweak something before you start the round or whatever. Um, and I think the, the main thing is it makes it a lot easier for the manufacturers, which is, which is key. The tweaking, twisting, tinkering, and tuning can make it difficult for players to gain trust in their equipment. Practicing on one setting over and over is what allows each golfer to find consistent feel and learn how each club will perform. It's not something I ever adjust. I mean, once you get something made, you, you leave it. So uh, I don't tinker a lot with my golf clubs. So, uh, you know, in my world, it's as if it's not, not adjustable. I, I, I never even uh, mess around with it. If I was to look at my garage and compare it to the rest of the tours after, you know, 15 plus years on tour, my, I'd say mine's pretty empty. I'm not a big tinkerer. I'm very excited and interested about you know new releases that you know Callaway bring out, new ball, new driver. That's absolutely. I'm all over that. But I'm not the guy who wants six different shafts in that head and you know all these sorts of things. I, you know I want some data on the ball and how it spins. But uh, once I get comfortable, I'm pretty pretty straight with it. While adjustable clubs make things easier on both golfers and equipment fitters, adjusting to wicked weather is a little more complicated. And so far, the 2013 PGA Tour season is a wonderful example. From windstorms in Hawaii to fog delays at Torrey Pines to a snowstorm in Arizona, Mother Nature and Old Man Winter have combined to serve up some wild golfing conditions. It's brought back fun memories for some players. I remember playing in New Zealand on the web.com a few years ago, and uh, we ended up getting some, some nasty winds, and it was really bitter cold, and the rain was coming down hard and just straight sideways. So, you know, I think... Uh, the piece of equipment that helped me out the most that day was my umbrella, more than anything. So, I mean, we don't play in too much weather. Most of the time we have beautiful sunny weather like here today in L.A. So, you know, we tend to play in the best uh, weather around the country. We don't get too much of that tough weather. But, uh, and actually even on the web.com in 2004 in Calgary, 
I remember it snowed that week when I won that tournament. So it was, uh, well, we obviously were in delay, so it melted and then we got back out to the course and, and we were back at it. But uh, yeah, we, there's been a few strange occurrences on the course. <laughs> Before we go to break, here's a look at Black Mountain Golf Club. This course is one of 20 amazing Kelowna courses that Canadian golf enthusiasts can play throughout the spring, summer and fall months. It's a Wayne Carlton design and although it has the look of a private country club with its strong scenery, the staff try not to take themselves or the game too seriously. Traditional golf's dead. We, we consider ourselves non-traditional. We consider ourselves fun of fun and we take that from loudmouth golf pants um, to music on the patio, music on the putting greens. Part of having fun is hitting great shots like holes and ones. Hitting an ace is celebrated at Black Mountain, has awards and having your name posted on the club's website are all part of the fun. Well, six par threes, you're going to have uh, obviously a better percentage of chance of getting those par th or getting those uh, elusive hole in ones and we celebrate those big time here and we've had uh, roughly about 20 to 25 a year and it's kind of one of those things that we want to we want to uh, certainly celebrate and we do do that with a bunch of things uh, in terms of gifting we do when an uh, individual receives that hole in one. While the course layout has numerous fun and gorgeous holes, perhaps it's the fifth hole that is the most notable and a reason unto itself to get out for a round at Black Mountain. It's an island green that plays 372 yards from the back tees. Our island green is the only uh, island green in the Okanagan as a par four. Generally you see island greens as par threes and being an island green and seeing a lot of golf balls in the water and really your, your shot selection is crucial on that hole to get the right yardage. Black Mountain is a great example of the new age course design philosophy for golfers who just want to go out and have some fun while not taking the game too seriously. After the break, we'll look at some of TaylorMade's cool disruptive advertising schemes. When it comes to launching new products, very few companies do it with as much splash as TaylorMade. Whether it's painted faces or yellow feet or flying faldos, they know how to draw attention to their new gear. TaylorMade Golf is part of the Adidas family and has been one of the top manufacturers in the game since the mid-1990s. The brand stands as the number one driver in golf and officially took over that spot back in 2005. But aside from its domination of drivers, the past 18 months has seen TaylorMade release many cool new products such as rocket balls, the new Lethal Golf Balls, the Addy Zero Golf Shoes, and the R1 Driver. While the products are innovative, TaylorMade has been doing everything possible to create disruptive advertising campaigns, meaning building content that consumers seek out rather than pushing the standard commercials that interrupt their favorite TV shows. Their first event came at Torrey Pines in the Farmers Insurance Open, where Dustin Johnson, Jason Day, and Brant Snedeker flew cardboard images of themselves wearing the new Addy Zero Shoes. Just two weeks later, Snedeker went on to win at Pebble Beach while wearing the Addy Zeros. These shoes are, you know, I think they're eight ounces less than, than the shoe I was wearing, and, and I love the shoes that I was wearing. Put them on straight out of the box at Kapalua um, to walk 36 holes in these things. I could tell a marked difference in my, in my energy level at the end of the day, the way my feet felt at the end of the day. And I definitely think it's an advantage over guys that aren't wearing them. So, I mean, this, this is something I've come to expect of Adidas. They keep outdoing themselves every time, and Adi Zero, the new Adi Zero shoe is, is no exception to the rule. When you're wearing a size nine shoe, it, it, when you're talking about steps that are being walked on a golf course, like Torrey Pines right here, when you're walking about 13,000 steps, that's going to equate to about 15,000 pounds of lifting your legs, which is which is an issue because why we're always tired at the end of the round, where we're lifting 15,000 pounds. So if we can give you back or take away about seven or 8,000 pounds, that's a big advantage. And especially the tour players have all said the same thing. I can't believe how great I feel at the end of the round versus how tired I used to feel. Yeah, I think that's the closest thing to flying um, that I could possibly get to. Just a few weeks later in Los Angeles, TaylorMade had skydivers jump out of a helicopter with R1 driver heads in hand as they made a special delivery to Sergio Garcia, Dustin Johnson, and Pat Perez. The event showcased TaylorMade's Operation Game On, a campaign where it helps in the rehab of wounded war veterans through the game of golf. Since 2009, the company has provided more than $120,000 in financial and equipment support to veterans of American wars. Being able to be out here and really work with veterans and be able to give them, you know, kind of hope and joy and something to really look forward to with the rest of their lives again is something that's so important and so special to our company. As you can imagine, having a driver delivered via parachute 
is something new for guys like Dustin Johnson and Sergio Garcia. I've seen a lot of clubs be delivered before. This is kind of a unique one. Have you ever seen something like this before? Yeah, no, I don't think I've ever had a club delivered via parachute. <laughs> um, it was interesting, but it was a lot of fun to see these guys, you know, parachute in, um, something I've never done and really don't have any desire to do, <laughs> but it's cool watching people do it. Obviously, to, to be able to, to help you know, this, these veterans and uh, for the wounded uh, warriors, um, it's, um, it's an honor. Uh, they, they give so much to us and put their lives uh, down the line to, uh, to help us. So, um, you know, it's the least we can do. Earlier this year at Pebble Beach, TaylorMade offered golfers a free bucket of balls if they agreed to demo the new rocket blades. The event attracted big time stars such as Clint Eastwood, greatest hockey player who ever lived, Wayne Gretzky, and even Notre Dame football coach, Brian Kelly. The event also had a charity element to it, as described by Jason Day. You know, this week we, you know, have a fun thing going on on the 17th hole where the pros, we get to uh, get the chance to, you know, if we make a hole in one, um, $50,000 goes to our charity and $50,000 uh, goes to the Monterey Peninsula Foundation. Um, so it's kind of fun that TaylorMade, you know, gives back as well. And I think a lot of guys and a lot of amateurs, amateurs are going to have fun this week wearing the bucket hat. Finally at Doral, TaylorMade launched its Rocket Balls Ear campaign that stems from the company's claim that Rocket Balls Stage 2 is 10 yards longer than last year's version. All over the course, fans found signs with additional IER written across them, as in the club hit it longer than before. Even Sergio Garcia got into the act. All right, Garcia here. I want you to be in the best shape possible for Bay Hill. Get down there and give me 20. Come on. You're going to kill this thing. There you go. Looking good. Our second stop in Kelowna is a pretty less Ferber design that's known for its many traps and hazards scattered throughout the course. This course won't beat you up, but it will still challenge even the best golfer. It's not going to intimidate you with length. It's going to intimidate you with a lot of water and uh, tricky green sites. Basically a lot of sand, very well crafted angles in the green sites. Uh, Ferber's line was always to me that the golf course has a right to defend par and here it does it not so much with elevation change or with great length but just uh, lots of well placed uh, hazards, water, uh, 11 holes with water and about 100 bunkers on the course. Don't expect Kelowna Springs to demand long balls from your driver because this course is about hitting the ball in the center of the club face and keeping it in the fairway. Combine that with good putting and you may have a shot to break par out here. It's truly a shot maker's course and there's no better example of this than the 14th hole. It's not a super long hole. I'm personally not a long hitter, so if I avoid the pond on the left, I tend won't, I won't get to the one on the right. It's all about the second shot on that hole. If, if it's a blue pin tucked back, uh, the one body of water has a large, you know, uh, encroachment on your angle coming in, and it's all about that shot. You know, if I'm not 160 or in, to be honest, I'm laying up 30 yards short right and going for power the hard way. Teeing up Team Canada. Reviewing Canada's National Golf Program, brought to you by RBC. Let us help you make your mark. Before we head to break, here's a look at the upcoming schedule for Team Canada's National Golf Team. Members of the women's team will compete for the National Amateur title in Quebec. The Porter Cup is a classic international tournament that includes past winners such as Phil Mickelson and Canadian Gary Cowan. The men will take a shot at both the Canadian and American Amateur titles during back-to-back -back weekends in August. When we return, I'll get fitted for some new blades. Welcome back to Score Golf TV. Okay, folks, I've got something really, really cool for you right now. I am in the TaylorMade Performance Lab, and this is where TaylorMade fits their clients, and I mean fits them to a T. They use matte technology. What's that? Well, it's kind of like being in a video game. Let's show you. The Technology Report, a look at the science, research, and development of the game. All right, Cameron, you're the guy who's going to have the, I don't know if you call it, pleasure of, uh, of seeing my sure. swing and fitting me and trying to get me into some new clubs here. Um, this is an amazing place, this uh, TaylorMade nice. Performance Lab. This is so, many, so much high-tech gear here, so many things here. Uh, tell me about it. Well, really, you know, TaylorMade Performance Labs are designed to help all golfers. I mean, they're, they're positioned almost for, for tour players, juniors, club champs but also like the regular guy that plays on Saturday mornings and you know, has a hard time breaking 90 or 100. Um, really what we do here is to help all golfers get down to 
that one common denominator of what club's going to work best for them, what's going to allow them to play their best golf, and of the entire range that TaylorMade makes, it's, it's massive. So, you know, a lot of uh, the golfers out there find that they need a bit of help to isolate what specs are perfect for them. That's what we use all this great equipment for. So uh, right now, I'm being uh, dressed up in this stuff that uh, this is kind of reminds me of when I was on house arrest. <laughs> Very similar thing. These are reflective markers, and uh, this is what the mat system uses to uh, to track my swing. Correct? Correct. Yeah. These uh, reflective markers are, are picked up by the infrared cameras, and that builds a 3D model. Um, really, the, the MAT system is designed to take information from six very high-speed cameras, proprietary technology that allows us to see exactly the motion of all of these key points. Wow. The biomechanical engineers have isolated these specific locations that we'll, we'll be mapping today, and that allows us to track not only what your body does, but again, when we give you a golf club, it's also marked as well. So again, the computer is able to track exactly what this club does, and then from there it builds a profile of exactly how you swing. So what's actually going to happen here? Well, what happens is as, as you're hitting shots, we're filming you from six different angles. That triangulates into a 360 degree look, and we can rotate that view from all angles. So you can look at me from upside down? Upside down, top down, down the line, face on, behind you from the target, which normally you wouldn't want to put a camera out there. <laughs> um, so really, we can, we can look at your swing from all angles. That really helps our fitters um, to isolate what it is that happens in your swing and where we should be looking to improve your equipment. The bad news is I think from any angle, it doesn't look all that good to be honest with you right now, but uh, let's have a look here and uh, you can tell me what, uh, sure. what you see. All right, Ken, I've gone through the uh, rigmarole here. I've taken yeah. all the stuff off. You've got some numbers on the yeah. screen here. Uh, how bad is it? It's actually pretty good. You're pretty consistent. You know, For a lot of golfers, they come in here thinking that, oh man, I'm unfittable, I, I'm not a very consistent player. But what we usually see is the fact that the numbers don't lie. Um, you know, you move at the same path, the same face angle, the same angle of attack, your speeds are consistent, your impact location, location is consistent, your ball speed is the same. Really what we've got to do is isolate how we can get the ball to travel a little bit further for you. And, you know, looking at your numbers, we saw that, you know, your launch angle is maybe a little bit low. So we'd use something like an R1 driver and add a little bit of loft, get the right shaft built in and isolate all the different conditions with, you know, face angle dial and shot shape weights. To, to hone in on what's going to get you the longest. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about this driver, isn't it? You can really tune it to anything. It's really tunable, and you know, and like we said before, for a golfer that's still sort of working on his swing a little bit, they can actually get this driver and work through their swing change that they've got some, some work that they're doing with their local PGA professional. Um, you can almost go and set the driver up backwards and make it harder to hit. It'll <laughs> actually help you to swing it better sometimes. So it's a, it's a very versatile club. We even went through the putting. I mean, you even have a putting fitting thing here as well. Correct, and I think that's almost one of the I hate to say like sort of the, the, the sleeper categories when we, when we talk about fitting. Um, you, half your shots are on the putting green usually. So more than half we, for me, but. <laughs> we, we spend a lot of time on the putter here and, and I think we do a really great job of being able to figure out not just what putter to use, but how to set it up, what length, what lie angle, what loft. A lot of people don't even know that there's loft on the putter and it really plays a big role into how well the ball comes off the face. Um, and then from there, obviously, head shapes, face balances, all kinds of different variables that we can help the golfer to figure out what's best for their game. Pretty cool. All right. I'm looking forward to my new set of clubs. Great. This is going to be uh, this is, this is one of the good parts of my job, folks. It's pretty neat to go through here. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. The third Kelowna course we feature is Sunset Ranch Golf and Country Club. The semi-private club is 23 years old and is a friendly home for golfers both on and off the course. But it's the course's tree-lined fairways and stunning views of the region that make it a standout golf course. Well, Sunset Ranch Golf Country Club is a uh, course that has five par fives, five par threes, and a lot of the par fours are not overly long, uh, but there's definitely, uh, you've got to be straight off the tee. We have a number, number of tree-lined fairways uh, and Scotty Creek coming in, into play, and so position off the tee is really important. It is in most golf courses, but here it's paramount. The final four holes are key to the course as they make or break your day. In fact, the four are a little bit legendary to members of Sunset Ranch. I don't think we have a set signature hole, so to speak, but we, we have what the members call a sunset finish. You know, you can have a good round going, we finish our last four holes are par three, par five, par three, par five. And my favorite holes are finishing hole. It's the 18th hole, it's a great par five. You have to challenge Anderson Lake off the tee, and then if, you, if you're a big hitter, you gotta make the decision of, am I gonna fly Scotty Creek on the second shot, or am I gonna lay up? And the green is very challenging as well. So it's a, to me, it's a great finishing hole. You can make a three, or you can make a seven, and a lot of our men's and ladies' championships have been decided on that hole. One more Kelowna stop right after these commercials.
Our final stop in Kelowna is at Okanagan Golf Club, the Bear Course. Dak Nicholas has a handful of designs in Canada, and one of them happens to be right here at the Bear. Bear Golf Course is a classic uh, Nicholas design. It's uh, wonderfully uh, forgiving off the tee. It gets a little more narrow as you approach the greens. The greens are large, expansive, beautiful, sometimes very, very fast, but uh, a great facility to come out and play a resort-style golf course. And if you want to tip it up, head to the back of the golf course, the back of the tees, and you've got a very, very challenging golf course. I know when Nicholas played here himself, he found it uh, very challenging from the back tees. The course has been described as ferocious as a grizzly bear or as gentle as a teddy bear. The course is challenging as it climbs through the rolling tree-lined hills that overlook the Okanagan Valley. All things considered, I think a player that plays well on the bear course is someone that hits it uh, relatively straight. Doesn't necessarily need to be a person that hits it above average length. Keeping the ball in play is critical. Managing your game around the golf course is really, really important. And as in most cases, uh, short game, chipping and putting is where you make your scores. It's well-placed bunkers and tiered greens lend some bite to a layout that could be as long as nearly 6,900 yards. Number three is a, is a beautiful and challenging par four. It starts with that elevated tee shot. That second shot, you're hitting to a, a well-protected green. And if you get to the green, then you're probably, hopefully, going to have a, a makeable birdie. And if not, uh, a good chance for a two-putt par. Score Golf will be back at the Kelowna region later this summer to show you even more great holes from the city that boasts 20 amazing golf courses for Canadians to tee it up at. Week Speaks is brought to you by Bushnell, makers of the Pro 1M and Tour Z6 rangefinders. TaylorMade has always been one of the most innovative companies in the golf business, and as an example of that, you have to look to their R line of drivers. The R7 was the first one with movable weight technology, the first adjustable driver. The R9 advanced that, but when they got to the R11, well, that one was so far superior to the R9 that the Brain Trust thought, boy, if we just launch this as a regular driver, people will just think there's an incremental increase. They won't realize how much better that driver is. So what did they do to distinguish it? Well, they took a page from their putters, which had come out that year, which were white, and they made all their driver heads white. Now think of that, they're risking a 30% share of the driver market on white heads, changing everything. It could have collapsed, but they wanted it to stand out. It certainly stood out in the PGA Tour. You know who was playing with those white-headed drivers. The result was, well, they had an increase of 10%, 43% market share in drivers, and it's just gone up from there. And of course, this year's model is the R1, which is also white with the addition of the racing stripes. It just shows you how innovative TaylorMade is. They've always been that way. They will always continue to do that. That's all the time we have for this week on Score Golf TV. I hope you enjoyed the show. Check out our website. Check out my blog at scoregolf.com. And Jason Logan's blog is up there as well. Look for that, and we'll look for you next time right here on Score Golf TV. Thanks for watching Score Golf on TSN, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by Molson Canadian 67, official beer of the PGA of Canada, RBC Canadian Open, and Canadian Women's Open. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Bob Weeks Clothing supplied by Ashworth, designed to celebrate golf, life, and style.